Hi, good day, everyone. Uh, my name's Alex. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to attend our webinar today, specifically looking at the UISP product and building to building links. Uh, so I'm Leaders National Trainer. Um, I train around topics around uh, building to building links and long distance outdoor links on a frequent basis. So really excited to be talking to you guys about that today as well. It's a little bit of a short webinar, so only about 30 minutes long. Um, we might run slightly over depending on the amount of questions, etc., that we get. Our questions are encouraged. Please, as you do see something that you are interested in and you want a bit more information about, please do feel free to ask those questions and we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. Uh, there is also a prize draw at the end of this webinar as well where you can win yourself a UISP router which we'll get to as well. Um, we're doing things a little bit different this year as well. So we are looking for suggestions uh, in terms of topics that we can cover for our future webinars. Uh, we're looking to do a few more technically focused webinars as well. We show you guys some of the more technical aspects of setting up ubiquity equipment uh, or any other equipment that you might have a suggestion for. So please do feel free to pop that through on the, the text or chat as well. Um, we'll be looking at that afterwards. Uh, if there's any questions that we can't answer during the, the course of the webinar today, I uh, will also answer them uh, directly afterwards by email. Uh, and this webinar is recorded and will be sure shared out automatically to all attendees, um, both those that, are, oh, everyone that has registered uh, will essentially get a copy of it as well. Uh, with that said, we're going to dive straight into it um, and we'll look at pretty much what the lowest hanging fruit is in terms of establishing a building to building link. So one of the common scenarios that we run into is that people are looking to uh, deploy a very basic but high speed link between two premises. Uh, a typical example here is where you have trenching and fiber going down the one side of the street, but the businesses on the other side have to wait another six months or 12 months or something like that uh, in order to, to get their fiber deployed. Um, or it could be a, a scenario where you just want a link from one property to another. Um, a very common scenario that we come across is a business with two properties and they have fiber on the one side and they just want to share that across to another property that they own without going through the expense and the, the time investment to do trenching and get fiber in place, etc. Really the lowest hanging fruit in order to do this is the Unify building to building bridge. Um, Unify isn't part of the UISP stack. Um, it's completely separate from that. It's literally part of the Unify ecosystem from Ubiquity. Um, but what makes this so unique is just the, the low amount of time investment and the high amount of throughput that you can get from this. So these are sold as a pair of two. You buy them in a two pack. Uh, they come prepared out of the box um, and they can actually do up to 1.7 gigabit per second um, throughput, which is pretty <laughs> significant. Um, that is a air rate or physical rate, so slightly lower for real world TCP throughput, but still tremendous amounts of throughput uh, for a link like this. What makes this unique as well is that it's 60 gigahertz equipment. So these both sides of these links are 60 gigahertz capable, so they operate in the ISM 60 gigahertz band which means it's virtually interference free as well. So even if you're deploying this in cities uh, or very densely populated environments, um, it is interference free. It's very seldom that you would get other equipment operating in that frequency range. And due to the uh, wireless propagation characteristics, that 60 gigahertz range uh, typically is very small. So it means that you won't get interference from other links around you typically. Um, the radio also has a 5 gigahertz backup radio built in. And the reason for that is 60 gigahertz is quite prone to weather events. So if there's rain, etc., cetera, um, it will drop the link. But with a 5 gigahertz link, it will just fail over to that 5 gigahertz link when there's bad weather. The best part about this is it's managed through the Unify application. So a lot of you would be very familiar with the Unify side of things already. Um, and it's essentially a 500 meter long cable that you're buying. Um, and it's it's prepared out of the box. There's no setup that you need to do. It's just a network cable <laughs> in essence that runs through the air. So the, the recommended range for this is about 500 meters. We have seen longer links, but you will lose a bit of throughput as you extend the range. Uh, but really for most urban environments, I think this is quite a cool solution. Um, so that's the, the easy one, and now we can start taking a look at the uh, more complex uh, outdoor link scenarios where we can do multiple uh, kilometers 
um, and even over 100 kilometers if we want to. So the, the one thing we'll take a look at first is UISP. So we'll start talking about what UISP is. Uh, UISP is essentially Ubiquiti's outdoor wireless product range um, and its management platform as well. So it's also the same name of the management platform. So this is for long distance outdoor wireless where you're communicating between two Ubiquiti pieces of equipment. So instead of going from a access point to a client device like a laptop or cell phone, this is going from one piece of Ubiquiti to another piece of Ubiquiti, uh, which can be either a couple of meters away or multiple kilometers. So it, the UISP platform itself is quite similar to what Ubiquiti did with their Unify solutions. Um, UISP has essentially become the central place to manage all of your outdoor equipment. Um, and it's a nice, easy interface for you to work through, set up links, manage links, monitor links, um, and manage customers as well. Uh, the idea behind this is to provide you with all the tools that you need to start a wireless internet service provider right out of the box. But you can also use this uh, not just for providing wireless internet, but also to establish long range wireless links. Really, there's no limit in terms of how far you can stretch with wireless links. Um, yes, you will have to incur multiple hops to get to certain destinations, but really you can go pretty much any distance you want to these days. So there's two primary components uh, when we're looking at the UISP management platform. Um, so there's the UISP network side of things, which is, uh, or it gives you the ability to manage devices, do network configuration, monitor links, etc. And we'll actually show this to you in our webinar today. Um, and then there's also the UISP CRM component. So CRM, as you would, as you would think, the name implies customer relationship management. It's extremely powerful, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to build customers, create customer portals um, for them to log in and to manage their accounts. Um, you can also create uh, different packages. Um, you can do automatic suspension of services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's really, really powerful. I mean, it's built into Ubiquiti into the UISP platform completely free of charge. Uh, other vendors tend to charge an arm and a leg for that, which is completely free on the Ubiquiti side. Uh, our main focus for today is more on the networking side of things, and we'll show you a couple of videos on how the networking works in UISP as well. So in terms of outdoor wireless link capabilities, Ubiquiti has pretty much departed from the 802.11 protocol uh, to a large extent. And their main focus today is primarily on the LTU products. Uh, LTU is actually short for long-term ubiquity. Uh, many of you would be familiar with the traditional Emacs products. You would have probably installed a few of those links already, uh, which is based on the 802.11 protocol, um, but it is essentially Ubiquiti's proprietary implementation of that protocol. The problem with the 802.11 protocol was that it was never really designed for outdoor wireless links. It was always designed for indoor uh, access point to client device communication. So for outdoor use, it's not really ideal. Ubiquiti have always worked around this with the AMAX protocol, but by departing from it completely, uh, Ubiquiti are essentially unlocking way more speed and more reliability from their equipment uh, by using their own proprietary protocols to equip uh, to control both sides of the link. So Ubiquiti are also continuing on with their fiber offering um, as well as their HMAX and UISP, uh, the other UISP networking products as well. Um, and essentially the, uh, the main idea behind this is to enable uh, longer range wireless links and uh, even wired links as well. Um, and there's still a lot of products here, especially on the UISP side of things, which are in early access and still in development. But this is an area where Ubiquiti is investing a lot of time and resources into to expand their product portfolio. It's also where Ubiquiti started. Uh, people tend to forget, but when Ubiquiti initially launched their product offering, they really specialized in disrupting the, the outdoor pricing trend where you could establish a, a WISP for less money than it uh, typically could. So really, that's where the uh, strongest, uh, one of their strongest regions is uh, in the outdoor space. Uh, and then, of course, they've made a shift to the indoor space with Unify equipment as well. So enough talking about that. Let's take a look at some real world scenarios. So Today, we're not going to be overly focused on the products. Rather, we want to spend some time on how the links works uh, and how to use the Ubiquiti tools that you have available in order to build long distance outdoor wireless links.
So the first and most important tool for planning any type of link is Ubiquiti's UISP Design Center. Design Center is available for you to access on Ubiquiti's website completely free of charge. Um, and it's an awesome tool for anyone that's looking to apply uh, to uh, deploy the long distance links. So in our scenario here today, we're going to show a connection from leaders offices here in under Adelaide CBD uh, to Mount Lofty, which is one of the highest points in Adelaide. I think it might be the highest point in Adelaide. Um, and we'll first show you how we are planning this link. And then what we're gonna show you in a couple of slides as well, is we're gonna show you how this link operates through the UISP platform um, and how it's running in terms of real world deployment. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to start playing this. Uh, what you're going to see is this is the tool, just me using it. I'm going to add a point-to-point uh, -point link. They've made this as easy as possible. So what I can do now is I can drag one, of, one side of this link to wherever I want to have my wireless connection. So I'm literally just going in this instance from Mount Lofty to Glenelg as an example. And Ubiquiti have automatically calculated the link for me. They have automatically determined what the best type of equipment is, what the expected throughput is, the range. They're also calculating how tall my towers need to be in order to accommodate this. And it's telling me that I need to use air fiber uh, equipment in this link. I can have a 100 megahertz wide channel and I can have up to 876 megabits per second. I can also change this around. I can uh, apply different filters here and I can choose different equipment. I'm not going to do that for this scenario, but um, essentially I can choose uh, whatever equipment I want and Ubiquiti can estimate whether this will work or not. Um, I can also change output power, channel sizes, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So very representative of, of what I would do in the real world. And if I'm trying to figure out if I can deploy a link to customers, this is the tool I would use. So here it's giving us an example where it's using 60 gigahertz equipment. And when you're using 60 gigahertz equipment, rain is a consideration and the tool even gives you that as well. So you can say how much rain you're expecting and we'll say based on the amount of rain that you have, this is the expected throughput um, and the capacity that we see from this link. So that's nice and easy going 17 kilometers is no problem, but what if we want a long distance link? So let's say we go from Mount Lofty to Wool Bay, which is on the uh, other side. It's on, I think it's on the York Peninsula, if I'm not mistaken. And you can even see that through these long distance links, this is 86 kilometers. Um, it's possible with Ubiquiti, uh, provide you have enough uh, height um, and you can get over the curvature of the earth. You can go extreme distances with this. Um, I'm doing another scenario here where you can see that the link is out of range. It's primarily the curvature of the earth that tends to block us in terms of establishing links. Um, and it will show us that the Fresnel zones, et cetera, aren't clear and we can't establish a link. This one, 109 kilometers, and it's showing that we can successfully establish a link. So this again, it's a, it's a tool to use for reference. It's not 100% set in stone. Um, and we'll talk about the geographical mapping, et cetera, in a second as well. So this is a point-to-point -point scenario. In other words, where we have one high site linking through to a customer or premises. We can also do a point-to-multi-point scenario. Uh, and again, very similar to before, what we're doing is we're just taking an access point and um, now I have two station devices or two client devices. I'm going to literally just take and drag these around and uh, essentially, I'm going to have one link that's set up towards the analog side, and then I'm going to have another client that is set up uh, somewhere else as well. So it's more towards the city side. There we go. It can say, okay, based on that, I can tell that you need to use a sector antenna. Uh, in this instance, it's a 120 degree wide sector antenna. Uh, telling me you need to use an LTE rocket with that antenna. And on the client side, it's telling me what I need to use as well. And it gives me an estimation of the expected throughput, the range, etc. It gives me an aggregate of both, so it gives me an average. Um, and through this, it's estimating what I need to deploy. If I'm a WISP, I can use this to figure out where my clients are and what kind of equipment I need on my high site or my tower. I can put down additional stations as well. So if I go to this menu here, I can click add station and that it's literally just as simple as dragging it to where I want it to be. So it's showing me my coverage region directly on the tool, which is really, really powerful. And I can add uh, additional stations as much as I want. 
Um, so really, this is trying to figure out the best scenario for me as a wireless internet service provider uh, in terms of the, the most cost-effective equipment to provide me the most throughput uh, at the most range as well. So I can move this around um, and it's super, super easy to do. Um, I think this is gauging by what I've seen from competitors. I think this is one of the easiest tools to actually manage wireless networks or map wireless networks. Um, and it's nice and easy for you guys to uh, see if you can expect range within a certain area. And in this instance, we're pretty much covering all of Adelaide with a single uh, LTU and a sector antenna, which is uh, insane. It's also giving us our expected capacity as well, which is around 417 megabits per second. Um, and really what you're going to be providing to your customers is typically in the range of, I don't know, 10 to 50 megabits per second as a wireless internet service provider. Extremely flexible, really cool tool, highly recommend it. I see a couple of questions coming through. We'll be sure to answer those towards the end of the webinar as well. So one of the, something that came up uh, during that design tools, you would have seen the line of sight calculator. Um, essentially uh, what it's doing is it's taking a look at a line of sight between two different access points or two different, uh, an access point and a client. So visible line of sight is not always possible. And what I mean by that is, or what line of sight refers to is the ability to see the other side that you're looking to connect to. It's easy for links that are only a couple of meters. So like if you have a hundred meters link, it's, it's pretty easy to see the other side. But what happens about, or what happens if you go 10 kilometers or 50 kilometers or 200 kilometers, how do you see a hundred kilometers into the distance? So the answer to that is the geographical data. So Ubiquiti uses geographical data from the US um, GS, I think the geolo geological survey, if I'm remembering that correctly, um, as well as Google um, to combine and build that tool. Um, so essentially Ubiquiti Design Center makes use of that already. It bases all of its information on the scientific terrain mapping details. Um, and one thing to note when you're planning links like this is that it cannot take into account um, stuff like buildings or trees, etc. It's more based on the actual uh, the terrain that you're on. Uh, in the US, they now have new LIDAR systems that are more accurately mapping it, but it's not available uh, yet throughout the rest of the world. Um, but this is fairly accurate for, for most scenarios. So it doesn't take into account stuff like trees, etc. like I said before. Um, and then the one question I often get when I'm doing training is, is line of sight required in order to establish a wireless link? I know a lot of you would have had some previous experiences where you don't have line of sight and you were able to establish a basic connection. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the answer to that question is yes, you should have line of sight. Um, the primary reason for that is if you have non-line of sight applications, yes, it might establish a primary link, but that link will be unreliable. When we're look, talking about links that need to be reliable, line of sight is the only way to go. And the one thing that often gets people confused as well is they think I can see the other side and therefore I must be able to establish a wireless connection. Uh, they often fail to take into account the Fresnel zone or the Fresnel zone, depending on how you pronounce that. Um, and essentially it's the bars that you're seeing uh, in the image here uh, that go around the primary link. These areas need to be unobstructed as well in order to to ensure high quality wireless links. So going on to the next thing that you typically need to take uh, into account when you're designing your links, uh, site surveys are extremely important. So client sites uh, might be far away and there might be buildings in the way, which is especially true if you're in CBD area. So if you're doing that example again, where we're going from Mount Lofty to the CBD, um, then there might be buildings and stuff in the way, which I wouldn't know until I got there. Another consideration is the electromagnetic interference at each side of the link. So a spectrum analyzer or something like that is essentially required for this. So the simple analyzers you get on your mobile device, your phone, etc., uh, do not have the adequate capabilities to fully survey a client site. So that's based on beacon and probe frames whereas outdoor equipment doesn't really have to rely on uh, beacon and probe frames and often isn't implemented in the outdoor wireless equipment um, because it's primarily used for the 802.11 protocol. So a lot of the tech is proprietary, which means if you scan a site on your, on your phone, it would show that the area that you're in is completely free of wireless interference, maybe a few small access points around, but nothing major, when in fact there could be 
a massive interference from other competing access points. So the, the tools we need to use for this, the first one is a spectrum analyzer. Ubiquiti actually has this built in to their outdoor equipment. Um, and essentially it gives you this waterfall view or this, this view to highlight where equipment is creating electromagnetic interference. So this might not show up on a client device like a cell phone, but it would show up on a spectrum analyzer. So Airview, Airmagic and Site Survey, these tools are built into the Ubiquiti equipment and they're designed uh, to give you real world information about what's actually on site as opposed to just looking at beacon and probe frames. So it can take non-access point interference into account as well, stuff like um, electric motors or something like that generating EMI interference. Another consideration or another important consideration is rain fade margin. So we say rain fade, but basically it's any type of environmental fade. So stuff like rain, fog, snow, dust, uh, even the temperature can impact a link. As you can see on my little example here, you can see how the link was operating before and we had a weather storm come through, uh, lots of rain, and you can see how the link degrades. So this is especially true if you have long distance links or equipment that operates above the eight gigahertz frequency range. Um, and we essentially need to compensate for this as well. So we want to make sure that when a uh, weather event happens, that we don't lose links to our customers. So the best way for us to do this is to essentially uh, over design our links where we give a, we set a target of, we wanna have a average link quality of minus 65 dBm, which is a good signal strength. Um, and in order to compensate for rain, if I know I'm gonna have uh, 15 decibels of rain, for example, I can again use the ubiquity link calculator to estimate this. Uh, then I can go, okay, I need to over engineer my link and I need to have the signal strength of minus 50 in order to accurately uh, maintain a link that is, uh, has enough throughput to maintain all of my clients. So this is just a, a very simple example of it, um, but rain fade is an important aspect of any link design. Another consideration is channel spacing. Uh, this is closely re related to co-location, which we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, to some people, this may sound silly, but oftentimes I'm speaking with installers uh, that are co-locating access points uh, on directly ad adjacent channels. And what I mean by that is they deploy an access point on channel one, two, three, four, five, uh, instead of channel one, six, and 11 in the 2.4 gigahertz space. So this is true for both the indoor and outdoor equipment, and it's extremely important to ensure that there's an adequate gap between the channels that you're using. So in the, this is the, the last slide, we talked about co-location, and essentially this is a graphical representation of what that looks like. Um, it's just multiple access points on a single tower, that's it. So tower space can be quite hard to come by, it can be expensive if you're renting it, and we often see people having to put access points on towers back to back, like you see here, um, or where you have a tower that is completely stuffed full of access points, uh, and the reason they're doing that is because it's uh, more cost effective to do it that way, it can be extremely expensive, or you, it would mean you have to rig your own uh, high sites or tower as well which can be very extremely expensive. So co-location can be quite complex. This is pretty much the worst case scenario. We have tons of competing in-band interference or other access points using the same frequencies. Um, and this can be really difficult to get uh, away from. Careful planning is required here. Um, and really it's too much for us to go into on this webinar today, um, but we do go into a lot of depth around this and how to optimize your links in the Ubiquiti training, the UBWS and UBWA, the outdoor classes. So if this is important to you and you have scenarios like this, we, I highly encourage you to take uh, a look at the training as well. We've literally helped resellers double and even triple their throughput to and even client capacity um, by doing proper RF design as well. So I think it is important to take a look at that. Another consideration is the uh, your gain, the antennas that you're using, the amount of gain that they have. Gain is simply how directional an antenna is. We always recommend using the highest gain antennas possible. Uh, in a nutshell, more gain equates to longer range and more reliable and higher throughput links. 
Uh, most wireless internet service providers play a balancing act between the number of clients that they want to connect and the amount of speed that they want to offer. Uh, this is true for most wireless internet service providers. Uh, when you're doing point-to-point -point links as well, it's also still true. You also need to generally use the highest gain antennas possible um, due to the increased range, uh, extra reliability, uh, and more throughput. It's easier to turn down the output power, but not having enough can be quite a problem. And then second to last general recommendation before I show you guys the UISP interface um, is have your links balanced. So if you have an extremely directional antenna on the one side, make sure that the other side of the link is directional as well. So in this instance, having a little panel antenna on the one side uh, would mean that it may establish a connection to the directional antenna on the other side, but this radio would be less capable of communicating back to that directional antenna. Um, again, this is a very superficial, just a, a quick overview of recommendations. Um, if you want to go into depth about this, I highly recommend the training one as well. So let's take a look at the UISP interface. This is the actual point-to-point -point link, and this is the live environment that I was talking about earlier, uh, where we can see how the equipment is represented in UISP, and this is the link between leaders offices and Mount Lofty as an example. So what we can see here is leaders offices right in the middle of Adelaide CPD and Mount Lofty. I'm using Mount Lofty because it's one of the tallest places around, and essentially what I'm doing is I can go click on any one of my sites, I'm just gonna mute the audio here, and I can see what devices are on that site. I can also see the distance of the link that is connected. Um, I can go manage the site as well, so I can say this is customer X, this is their phone number, this is their details, etc. cetera. Um, I can see all of the devices, both wired and wireless, uh, and I can drill down into this as well, and I can see, for example, what my link capacity is, the quality of that link, within the last hour, how much uh, usage this has had, um, and I can see what the real world impact of weather events, et cetera, are uh, in real time or after the fact as well. So in my setup here, I've got a UISP router, and I've got uh, one of the PowerBeam ACs connecting up to Mount Lofty as well. Um, I can, of course, get more statistical information about this as well. Um, I can filter this down to the stats and I can see my average signal strength, my average throughput, et cetera. And then I can get a whole bunch of inf information about the um, radio, get a lot of information around the link quality, um, and I can even see which frequencies they're operating on, um, the, the countries that it's set to, the service uptime, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have SLAs, it's a nice way for you to see all of this information. It can also show me the other side of the link as well. Um, and again, this is just completely free of charge. You don't need to pay anything for this. Uh, and it's nice and easy to use um, from Ubiquiti side. So it's giving me all the information there. And I can also set up notifications in case of outages, et cetera, as well. And you can see some of the notifications which have been triggered there. So this is the one side of the link. I can also go to the Mount Lofty side and I can go play around with this as well. It, it's very similar on both sides of it. You'll see, again, different site information, uh, different device information. And if I go to manage again, you'll see that I can uh, add the, the contact information for that site. I can also upload a picture of that site if I want to. If my texts go out to sites and they want to see where this was installed, uh, it's nice to have a reference picture in place. Uh, what I can do as well is I can move this between sites. I can move a device between sites. I can create backups of my site. Um, and then I can even uh, remote into the device from the UISP management interface. So I can go to open terminal. Uh, it will give me the login credentials. So, so, so this is just done by SSH. Um, and essentially I'm typing in the username and password of the site that I'm trying to connect to. I'm connected in this instance. And now I can run commands. So I can force a restart, update the firmware, et cetera, et cetera, from there. So the next thing we've got is the devices. So I can manage my devices and the firmware that they're on as well, which is very important because you don't want to update just the, let's say the main tower's um, 
firmware and then the rest of the client devices disconnect due to firmware issues so it's really nice to have that built in uh, and then of course you can have lots of notifications um, you can base your notifications on a whole bunch of stuff you can see if you're running on battery for example um, and you can see all the notifications which have been triggered here uh, so really powerful um, and I can obviously filter that down as well if I want. You can also do task manager which is more related to the Ubiquiti CRM side of things and then of course in settings, the settings here is more related to uh, my UISP console as opposed to device settings. Um, you can still manage the devices uh, on the device itself so you can obviously log into each device, each one on each side of the link and manage those devices individually. Um, alternatively you can uh, do basic management through here and you can even in invite other users to this as well so if you have multiple people in your company that need to have access to managed uh, links then essentially you can invite them as an administrator um, and you can give them different access levels and through devices here it will also show me all the devices that are connected to this uh, which may not be ubiquity devices or they could be a computer or something else as well you can link devices to uisp through uh, the uisp key and one thing I will note here is Ubiquiti has a ton of information and documentation around UISP and how to manage it, etc. It's extremely easy, um, especially the networking side of it. It's really, really simple. Um, if you are interested in seeing the CRM side of it, which is, a, I'll speak perfectly honestly and say I, it blew my mind. It, I've haven't used it for quite some time, and when I used it last week absolutely blew my mind in terms of what it's capable of. Uh, we have a video on YouTube on the Leader Academy uh, YouTube channel which I highly encourage you guys to check out as well. Unfortunately it's a little bit long to cover today um, but it shows you how to implement uh, Ubiquiti CRM and create customers, build them, uh, set up ticketing etc. So really really powerful. That's pretty much it for the point-to-point -point link examples and the, and the considerations. Again, if you want something, uh, if you want any more in-depth information around how to further streamline any of this, highly encourage you guys to check this out um, at our, one of our training sessions. Um, and we've got uh, training throughout the country pretty much uh, all the dates listed on screen there um, if you guys have specific uh, requirements around training we can do customized trainings as well and then of course same as always you can access all of our webinar content and register for any one of the pre up and coming webinars as well just on leaderacademy.com.au